while the panelists are taking their spot, we just had a wonderful one hour conversation and already starting to get to know each other a little and hopefully we can bring a lot of those insights also across to you. But I also like to take this moment to just before we get started to actually just reflect on what is it that we're doing here. It is unique that we in Europe can sit for two days and reflect on what have we learned in the refugee crisis. What are we going to do next? And speak openly about it and bring people together. But on the other hand, there's also an urgency right now. There's 25 million people with refugee status at the moment and the number is growing. So there is an urgency as well. Sitting here and just talking, it's not going to do it. The question is, is tech going to save the world? Probably not, and definitely not alone. Is entrepreneurship going to save the world? Maybe, maybe not. Let's hear from the panelists. Thank you very much for coming. So I have three wonderful entrepreneurs here, and I'd like to start with ladies first. Um, Lean, what was your entrepreneurial spark? Where did it start? Hi, everyone. So I am Lean. Actually, um, I am an architect. I came from Syria in 2011 here in France. And um, when I came here, I was, I was very happy because now I, can, I have all the opportunities to do things differently, maybe to create things. So from the beginning, I always had this, I want to, to create something, to, to do a new, like my own job. But I didn't know how, from where to start, um, where to look. I was afraid, actually. It's a new country, new language. And that's why I didn't like do it, actually, till last year, when I understand the word incubator. <laughs> So it was the first time for me. So what is incubator? Everyone talking about what is this? So after that, when like a lot of um, organiz organizations and um, uh, associations led us as refugees to know what is incubator and help us to do this. So that's why I started. And uh, it has been a year since I started working on this startup, still working on it. Wonderful. What about you, Ashish? What was the entrepreneurial spark? Why are you working this? Um, so I grew up in India, actually, and uh, I studied banking in London. But what I realized um, very early on in my life that I could just uh, work for myself for the rest of my life, or I could just work for people and something which is bigger than myself. Right? My grandfather uh, is a refugee. Um, he came as a refugee back in 1947 from Pakistan to India at the age of 24. And I grew up with his stories. And I saw what a successful entrepreneur he himself was, right? And he started from scratch. And when I saw that, uh, and while I was in Europe, I was living in Belgium. I saw this crisis, uh, so-called crisis happening here. I thought this is the exact thing that I've learned in my life, that the refugees have the same traits as a successful entrepreneur, right? seeing my grandfather. And I just knew this is what I wanted to do. So that's uh, what uh, really uh, uh, sparked uh, the entrepreneurship zeal in me. Yes. Hi, I'm Nick Shupipat. I'm originally from Bangkok, Thailand. I fled my country in 2014. Um, I was persecuted by the military, military junta. I arrived in France and I seek refugee status, was granted, and I have to admit I'm, I'm very grateful and had, had I stayed in my country, I probably would have been locked up or dead. So I decided to um, start this organization called FAIR, which stands for Action and Innovation by Refugee Entrepreneurs basically to give grants to those organizations that basically supporting refugee entrepreneurs and to create an investment fund 
that would invest in them after the uh, entrepreneurs been through incubators and after we select them, spot them, we invest in them. So, so basically, this is my way of um, uh, give it back and my gratitude to, to, to France. I, I used to be quite a successful entrepreneur while I was in Thailand. I was running and own one of the largest renewable energy company in, in Asia. So I think I can leverage on my experience and my entrepreneurship to, to mentor and to make sure that refugee entrepreneurs that we support get the best attention and, and mentoring and support. Thank you. So, Ashish, I want to get a little bit more into, you were talking about your grandfather and how his experience, and what he had been through was affecting how he was acting in his personality. So from your experience, what is it that refugees or newcomers are learning through that experience and how does that become an advantage when starting your own startup? Yeah, I think, um, as I was speaking to Leon before, the journey that they have to undertake uh, to come from another part of the world, a different country, and to come to a place which is safe, uh, they have to go through an unbelievable journey which we can only listen to and hear the stories, but the ones who've gone through it, they know what it means deeply. And during that journey, what they learn is how to adapt, how to survive, how to take risks. Yeah? And that is what an entrepreneur needs, right? The risk-taking ability. Tomorrow, if I, if I tell an, uh, a person to leave everything behind and start their own business, they would think 100 times because they have a lot to lose. But when a refugee comes from Iraq or Syria or Somalia, anywhere here, they have nothing. So for them to take risks is not that difficult. So I believe the whole journey teaches them uh, what it needs to be uh, a successful entrepreneur. And Lean, are you a risk taker? <laughs> Actually, yes. So this is uh, what we was talking about. Uh, as we saw a lot in our countries, as we had um, a list of everything, as, as, uh, as you said uh, before, we don't have anything to lose. Uh, so why not? Yes, let's let's do it. We just we were in the zero, like in the we hit the ground, and then we can start from there. Why not? I like it. Why not? Nick, you have been through starting all over again in in France. So what is that experience being like? Being an extremely successful entrepreneur in Thailand, coming here and then starting over again with a new business, with a new fund. Can you talk us through? that experience of, of coming from somewhere else to a new country and starting up. Right. So not only I start FAIR to support refugee entrepreneurs, right? I actually start over again myself. Um, and my business, the company called Blade, uh, with a product called Shadow, maybe some of you uh, might heard or, uh, uh, or maybe some of you are our subscribers, so for those of you who don't, uh, we, we do a virtual gaming PC, sub, uh, subscription base. So basically we, we intend to um, replace a desktop conventional gaming PC rather than paying a thousand or two thousand euro, you would pay 29 euro a month subscription. Now that's the business that I'm in right now. So. Okay, well, the, in my case, it's a little bit tricky because even though I kind of start over again, I, I, have, I have a certain amount of resource. But if I didn't, I guess, I guess being an entrepreneur, you, you, you kind of risk taker and you kind of, by nature, you see opportunities you want to take and you want to um, succeed anyway. But even for refugees who, who, who had no entrepreneurial or business background, I still think they, they make very good candidates for, for becoming an entrepreneur because, well, most likely they would come from less developed economy with probably not as good, say, rule of law. So when they come into a new 
country, new economy, they, they appreciate it. Uh, they appreciate what most local would, I would say, take it for granted, right? Like, you know, I, I'm from Thailand, arrive in France, and you, you have corruption, or maybe little, if exists at all, uh, compared to Thailand, where everything is a mess. The judicial system is not exactly uh, reliable. You have all kinds of risks. You come here, you actually appreciate it. And you see, plus you see things in different perspective. So not only by nature, you can take more risk, but you, you see things with a different perspective. And you, you, you are likely to tackle issues with a different approach as well. And, and, and I think that increased the chance of, you know, become successful. Lean, I'm curious to hear about your experience coming here and what is, uh, in France, the fertile ground that you have found? So you already talked about, you heard of incubators and have become part of the program. So what is it that Europe offers for newcomer entrepreneurs in Europe that you really appreciate here? First of all, I'm gonna, uh, gonna tell you what, what I do. So um, when I came here, I wanted to create this uh, these links between between architecture, between history, this is, I am an architect. In form in, uh, I, I studied architecture in Syria. So I saw also that uh, to create links between architecture, between history, between Syria and France, and between past and the future, that give a great opportunity for people to really understand the culture of other countries and to, to when they travel, to see more about the cities they are they are visiting, and that's why I am now creating an uh, an, an tourist agency, innovative one, uh, where we, we're going to talk about architecture, about history, using the the technology of virtual reality during the tours. So, going back to your question, also, so I was telling you about how I encourage all always my friends to go to do their uh, their own businesses because it's another thing like searching for a job it's not just boring but it's tiring and <laughs> i i think as refugees we we all stayed for years this is me actually looking for jobs and it's frustrating sometimes like just maybe i am just a loser why no one is taking me but creating your own job it's 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 fun. It's we feel alive, so that's why it's, I'm always encouraging all my friends, all the people I know. Go ahead, create your own job, make your idea real. There's a lot of ideas here and there. It shouldn't be the super. So you shouldn't be like like Microsoft, but you can start from somewhere. It's your own project. Just love it and do it. So to all the women two female founders, you can actually do it. So it's also my personal plea. Women, we need more of you to start your own businesses. So, yes, you can clap for that. <laughs> so, Ashish, what, what's then some of the challenges? So we, now we talked about, yes, there's all these wonderful entrepreneurs, there's also wonderful people who want to support and invest. What are some of the challenges that refugee entrepreneurs hit in Europe? Uh, I think um, the challenges that refugee entrepreneurs face are uh, pretty similar to what other entrepreneurs face. It is uh, access to funding, the ecosystem, mentorship, training, all of that. But what happens is, added to all these challenges, there's a lack of trust. And actually, we did a forum in Berlin earlier this year where we had the similar conversation between uh, five refugee entrepreneurs. And I was expecting everyone to say, we don't have funding, we don't have uh, access to capital. But the core outcome of this discussion was the trust factor. They say that nobody trusts them. Even the banks refuse to open a bank account for them because they don't have a credit history, they don't have the nationality, right? Even though they're eligible to open a bank account, but they're refused for no, on no grounds. They just refused. So I think the trust factor is very important and that needs to change over time and people need to become tolerant and also accept the differences we have between human beings. And uh, yeah, so I think this, this is a very important factor that I see is, is a big challenge in the next few years which we have to overcome. 
So Nick, what's your secret source of building trust? Well, um, well, it's not an easy one, right? And not only not only the lack of trust, but you you also handicapped by the lack of network, mm. right? You don't you don't know who to go to if you face certain issues. So answer your question first, <laughs> and then I'll go further. <laughs> you can say well, both. Well, how, how do I overcome? I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to relate this to the time when I actually start my, 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 my new business with, with, with a bunch of friends. Well, in my case, um, the guy who actually um, asked me if I want to um, invest was, was my, my former lawyer who, who decided to start this new business with two, two, two of his tech friends. So I, I joined as a fourth one. Um, in my case, it was easy when you work with a lawyer. He's your lawyer. You, he, he's very likely to understand who you are and, you know, and how you are. So it, it, was, it, was, it was easy. Plus, I'm the one who comes in with the investment, with the seed investment. But um, I can imagine if, if I have less resource and without actually extensively the work history with anyone who, who, who you want to start a business with or you want to seek funding from. It's difficult and, and I'm not sure I, I, I know the answer of, you know, how do you actually overcome this? But, but at the very least, I think, I think you, you just be honest, be transparent. You just basically be yourself, right? Otherwise, you would come to um, incubators and eventually if we found you <laughs> or you find us, um, FAIR might invest because we, we, we understand that, that, that they're handicapped and, and they need help and they're good candidates um, and they're likely to succeed. Lean, I saw you nodding your head a lot when talking about networks and not having um, a local network here. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of challenges facing us as refugees wanted to start their entrepre their uh, their uh, companies. Uh, as you said before, the it's uh, it's the the um, we don't have a lot of contacts. We uh, we try to create them because we are coming from another country. We start we have to start from from zero. But also the uh, we need money. <laughs> From the end, we need money. We need money as all entrepreneurs, but maybe we need it more because to create the job you need to to live. So you need you need money to pay it for your for your rent and your life. But at the same time, you want you need this money to create jobs and to create your uh, your own uh, startup. Uh, but also the difficulty is to know how to look for this uh, this money. How to how to know all the uh, the ecosystem of funding it's it's all new we lost in the terms in the in the words especially it's a new language so it's more difficult for refugees to do this and how much money do you need and what do you need it for okay so for me for my project i will need it for uh, develop the virtual reality to do the communication so it will be around uh, 50000 and uh, 100000 euros to do all that so anyone investing in VR, come talk to Lean afterwards. I'm also curious, we talked earlier about mentorships and the importance of having good mentors, and I heard that in your question as well. So how do you find a mentor, a good mentor? Again, when, when you're a refugee, you come in, move to the new country, it, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult. And I guess not a lot of um, organization that support refugee, including the incubator. Um, I, I'm sure they can, to certain to certain extents, um, assist assist refugees um, with 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 good advice. But mentoring them to become successful on the run, I think I guess there's 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 no fixed formula, right? But um, what what fair is intended to do is is that we will leverage on basically my, my experience as an entrepreneur and, and I would bring in a few friends who 
are already um, very successful entrepreneurs in, in France and ask them to help um, with the, the, the mentoring sessions and, and, and hope that through our advice we can, we can increase the chance of, of success. But that would be through our um, investment program that, that we would probably launch later but, but for now, if they want to find a mentor, then I would guess, I would guess you know, going to, to place like incubators like Mint or like Singa, that probably works. So if there's some entrepreneurs sitting here looking for mentors, can they come talk to you afterwards? Yeah, absolutely. He's ready. And also Christina, who's sitting down here. Any final words? You've got 40 seconds. It's going to be the shortest pitch Lean, any final words? So yes, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you all for this. And um, as I told you, go for it. And if anyone is interested in investing in virtual reality, and uh, if anyone is interested in joining me in my tours, just go ahead. Fashis. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for, for having us at the event, having me here. And it's been a very inspiring time at Tech Fiji Summit. Thank you for all the team uh, who've done such an amazing job. Thanks a lot. I guess to, to all of you who either are potential refugee entrepreneurs or just thinking of become an entrepreneur, well, I encourage you, go for it. And with go for it as final words, our panel is over. Thank you. Thank you.